he had thought that television might be too ambitious. But he said that he was now confident that it was right. Uganda today has a vibrant media industry, which was not the case in the past when there was only one television station, Uganda Broadcasting Service. That was introduced in 1963 as a black and white analog television. Television broadcasting was initially scheduled to start at the same time with radio in 1954 but was reportedly deliberately delayed by the colonial government, creating a long-time anxiety that was later to be resolved by the newly independent Uganda. The government has thought fit to have television to help implement some of the most important aspects of its policy. Therefore, introduced television as perhaps the most powerful weapon available to us. The then Minister of Information, Broadcasting and Tourism, Akbar Adoko Nekion, pushed for the starting of Uganda Broadcasting Service Television, which was commissioned by the then Executive Prime Minister, Dr. Milito Nogboti, on the afternoon of Tuesday, 8th October, 1963, at the then White Man's Hospital, Nakasero Hill. The television manager shows the way, and Dr. Nogboti, followed by the minister, moves forward to cut the tape while newspaper and cameramen record the event. The tape is cut. The studios are open. A Harvard University and Syracuse University graduate, Agri Awori, was the first Ugandan director of Uganda Broadcasting Services Television, taking over from the British managers in 1967. We didn't have a lot of equipment. We didn't have transmitters to cover the whole country. And furthermore, the studio was actually inherited from the former European hospital. All the senior staff, the director, who was the, more is the CEO, was a British uh, BP seconded person. All the senior producers were also from Britain. By the time he left in 1971, television coverage had been expanded from Kampala to Masaka, Lira, Mbali and beyond. When we entered the expansion program, <clears throat> we covered considerable areas of Uganda. But we are doing this as a technical challenge, but we didn't have many viewers outside these areas. Television transmission would start at 6 p.m. and close at midnight. We used to have only one camera, but now we imported about three more, so it was able, we were able to cover uh, an event in the studio from different angles. And then eventually, we got from Germany a mobile broadcast unit, three vehicles, one for, for camera control, one for uh, inputs, and the last one, of course, was turned by a generator. Turning on the television was an honor only bestowed to the men of the house characterized by fumbling with the antenna to get the best picture. It was a big challenge. Most of the TV sets really were community. We put them in the community centers, schools, and a few individuals, mostly expats and Asian community. Television sets were few and having one always elevated a person to a high status within the community. Those without a television set could only be invited to watch all in actual sense pay a visit during evening hours. The production was very little. The most popular program when we now got the outside broadcast unit was at Nakivuvo, that's football and also at independent celebrations, political events. Television sets were referred to as boxes, were few and mainly owned by civil servants, politicians, well-to-do families, government officials and at community halls. Denial of a seat before the box was considered a punishment for any youngster of between the 1960s and early 1990s. The analog broadcasting services were provided by government only until 1992 when the broadcasting sector was liberalized. Ever since the liberalization policy was put in place, however, there has been tremendous growth in private radio and television broadcasting services in Uganda. But this is an opportunity Uganda Broadcasting Corporation has of not only uh, modernizing itself, but of course uh, making sure that uh, uh, the opportunity for expansion to the rest of the country does take place. At the time, there was only one channel available, not like today when consumers enjoy an exciting range of riveting television content 
packaged into various genres, making it an integral part of people's daily lives. There have also been changes in the way the signal is being sent from analog to digital. This has given rise to the digital terrestrial television and direct to home broadcasting. Today, live and interactive TV is on the rise with viewers participating in programs which have intensified the television experience. The country should expect better TV services, better pictures, better quality sound. With the migration from analog to digital, there are a lot of benefits. Television content producers and television station owners are constantly looking for the magic formula for keeping their ratings high. There are two types of broadcasting content service packages or channels, free-to-air and pay TV. For free-to-air, one can receive these TV channels on their TV sets without any subscription or paying a monthly fee. Expect uh, a good TV, television services, good television services, and everybody will enjoy himself or herself with uh, this... Uh, uh, digital migration. On the other hand, pay TV also referred to as pay per view is commercial and one has to subscribe by paying a monthly subscription fee to watch the associated TV channels. This is highly competitive environment with an influx of new stations. On air presenters continue to switch loyalties depending on the packages being offered. It is our official channel through which we reach out the population of Uganda. And the UBC must remain a priority for the government of Uganda. And therefore, we must adapt also as Ugandans, as the human population, to these new technologies. The single channel has been swept into the annals of history by the entry of a host of service providers like DSTV, GoTV, and other operators. 60 years of independence with the many achievements, the achievement of UBC getting better and better is also one of those that we are proud of. So that Kaye Deo Havimana, UBC News.